So let's take a look a little bit at uh, memory and cognition. Some of the folks who can take courses in memory and cognition here, uh, some people that uh, are instructors that teach memory and cognition uh, that are in the upper division, for those of you who are thinking of taking, taking that in the upper division, is uh, Iris Bland and Gitlin and um, Russ Espinoza are two of the faculty members here that teach memory and cognition courses. Uh, and there are some other folks too. And you saw in the video that was assigned uh, Zimbardo sweat at one point when um, he was doing a little memory task. So we're going to do the memory task uh, that he was doing. We'll review that talk about the principle that was there in the video. Uh, he was working with Gordon Bauer, who's another faculty member at, um, at Stanford, a colleague of Zimbardo. And Zimbardo is a very bright guy, published a very important paper in the journal Psychometrica, a mathematical model of learning uh, that's very sophisticated. And you saw Zimbardo go whoosh when he got the, the thing right because he, he didn't want to look bad in front of this uh, guy he obviously uh, is impressed by. <coughs> Gordon Bauer. So we're going to have, a, what I'd like for you to do is um, don't write anything down. We're going to I want you to look at this list and memorize the list, associating each word with the number. So you not only need to know the words, but also know the order of the words, which one is number one and number two. So here's our list of words. Number one is vegetable. Vegetable. Two is instrument. Instrument. Three is college. Four is nail. Five is fence. Six is basin. Seven is merchant. Eight is queen. Nine is scale. And ten is goat. So memorize that list. So I'll give you a few seconds to concentrate on it and memorize it. You saw the video already with uh, Ebbinghaus. He was using nonsense syllables, but these, these are actual words here. All right. I'll now take out a sheet of paper and write numbers one to 10.
check it out and see how you did. Oh, need to get it right. So one was vegetable, two was instrument, three is college, four is nail, five is fence, six is basin, seven is merchant, eight is queen, nine is scale, and ten is goat. How many got all ten? A couple people. How many got nine? Eight? Good. Seven, six, fewer than six. All right, we're going to try something to make it harder. As it turns out, making it harder makes it easier. And that's one of the things you learn by watching uh, the Bjork interview that's uh, linked there for last week. So Bjork's an expert on memory and he says that the things that make it easy to learn make it easy to forget. And if you make it harder to learn you can remember it better. One of the things that students sometimes try to do is they sort of think of their education as like Christmas ornaments, each one in a separate box. It's easy to remember each ornament if it's in a separate box. It's more complicated if you assemble a tree. But the tree itself has a better tone. It's easy to learn if they're in a separate box but it's easy to remember if it's on a tree. It's harder to remember the tree though. So you need a structure. This is one kind of a structure. There are other structures that enable you to attach things. The more things you can attach something to, the better your memory for it will be. And so sometimes I'll tell you strange jokes or things that rhyme with this thing we're talking about, like a piscatister rhymes with he kissed your sister or you know some other strange thing like that. These things connected to some historical story these things enable you to have other ties, and by tying things together, you, you can build your memory for them a lot better and remember them better. Makes it harder to learn, but easier to remember. So we're going to first learn this extra thing, that one is a bun, and two is a shoe, and three is a tree, and four is a door, and five is a hive, and six is sticks, seven is heaven, eight is a gate, nine is a line, and ten is a hen. These are called peg words. Yes. Heaven. Heaven. Uh, V-E-N, please. Oh, heaven. Heaven. That's like my brother's way he spells his name. Uh, did I do it over here, too? <laughs> she doesn't let me get by with stuff like this. Thank you. I have to let her get away with it two days a week. She, she, she goes out with this younger guy, good looking, you know, two years old though. It's okay that she sleeps with him, I guess. All right. Hey, Max. All right. So I, I let her correct me like that. Good thanks for correcting me. Actually, I didn't want to be caught with that. All right. So, heaven. All right, so we're learning these words first. Then we're going to associate them with some words. So we'll try another list here. And then for each one, we want to create a picture of it in your mind and associate it with the peg word. So one is lumberjack and one is a bun. So I want you to imagine you went to, I don't know, Arby's or someplace, and you ordered your sandwich. And you bite in, and ouch, there's a little lumberjack inside the sandwich. You know, a little axe and his red shirt. Can you picture him there? You know, he's got a beard. He's got the, all the little, like the tight fitting skull cap and a little axe on his shoulder inside the bun. And then uh, at the Olympics, the uh, women's skating championship is happening, and a skater comes out with one shoe and one skate. He sticks her foot up and shows, I've got a tennis shoe, how do you expect me to skate? Well, he said, well, you still got one skate, so you can skate on that one. So, shoe is a skate. Three is a tree, and this guy had some really good fruit on the tree. I don't know, we can make it a pear tree. 
Uh, he wanted to eat some pears, but he couldn't get through because it was a hedge all around the tree. So picture the tree with a hedge around it and the fruit is hanging there, but nobody could get any of the fruit because there's a hedge around the tree. And then four, there's a door. So we went and opened that door and what did we see? There's a bunch of guys wearing pilgrims hats and with blunderbusses and turkeys ought to have their Thanksgiving there. So what in the hell is going on here? And they said, well, we're making a colony. So behind the door, there's a colony there with all the pilgrims and their blunderbuss. And five is a hive. So you see this beehive, but a strange sound is coming out of it. And you look in through the hole, and you see a bunch of little ducks wandering around, say half life or something. So a hive is full of little ducks. And then six is sticks. Manny Pacquiao was so mad about losing the decision that he smashed up all his furniture. Six is sticks and it's furniture, so all that's left is sticks. He's going to burn it in the furnace. So these sticks are going to go in the furnace, which rhymes with furniture. So sticks is what's left of his furniture by losing the biggest fight of the century. Uh -huh. Seven is heaven. Now when you get to heaven, everybody sits around naked on clouds. Except they wear one, kind of like Michael Jackson, except instead of one glove, it's one stocking. They're all naked on, in heaven, except they're wearing one stocking. Eight is a gate. This guy had a little picket fence around his house with a little gate, and people kept not seeing it. They just walked up and tripped and fell. Kept hitting their head and suing him, so he put a pillow there. So, <clears throat> you can picture the gate, and then right beyond the gate, little low gate, beyond the gate there was a pillow. Nine is a line. The, the wife drew a line and said, no, no mistress, you can't draw the line. Drew the line all around the guy's waist. The mistress can't cross the line. All right, ten is a hen, and the hen was going, bah, 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 bah. People said, what do you, what's the matter? And they said, somebody just threw a dart and hit me with a dart. So picture a poor little hen with a dart stuck in it. All right? All right, now get your paper out. <laughs> Write your numbers out. Fill in the things from memory. Everybody finished? So here's that list. Number one was a lumberjack. Two is a skate. Three is a hedge. Four is a colony. Five is ducks. Six is furniture. Seven is stocking. Eight is pillow. Nine is mistress. And ten is dart. Nobody got all ten this time. Looks like most people. Nobody got five or more. So the ten people should have been included, five or more, I was saying this time, not five or less. I mean, did better this time, the second time. So it's a little harder to learn it that way, but it's better to remember. So we'll check you and see how you're doing on it next time. And you saw that listed now. A lot of other interesting things you saw in the video. I'm going to show you a video now uh, about social psychology. And social psychology differs from personality in a way that I want you to uh, pay, pay attention to this theme. Sometimes it's called trait, this controversy, versus state. 
And trait psychology is sometimes personality is an example of trait psychology. So how do, why does somebody do something? Oh, because they're intelligent or because they're sadistic or because they're outgoing or shy. People differ from each other with respect to personality. These are traits or characteristics of people. State has to do with the situation. And so personality as an area of psychology, that was for many of you chapter 13 or so in the book, versus situation which is social psychology. That's the uh, chapter that moved around quite a bit in Callan's book. Maybe for some of you it's chapter 14 or 16. Um, that's a sign now for you to read the chapter on social psychology. But you're going to see a little bit about the history of social psychology. Some of the interest in social psychology is how is it that people influence each other. One person influencing another person, this is sometimes called persuasion, where you try to get somebody to do something. If one person is trying to influence a lot of people, that's called leadership. And many social psychologists got really interested in, in this topic when Hitler seemed to be able to kind of take over an entire country and control it for his particular purposes. But this is a question of leadership. Then you have the question of a lot of people influencing one person. So what's the effect of if everybody is doing something and this person feels left out if they're not doing what everybody else is doing? So conformity referred to this time. Some of these paradigms also, you know, what is the influence of many people if, on whether or not this person is going to help that person? So helping behavior might be influenced by the number of other people that are around and their characteristics. The phrase, the fundamental attribution error, is going to be used. Fundamental attribution error. And what do social psychologists mean by that? They mean this. When you ask somebody, you know, why did he do that to that person? Sometimes they will talk about traits of the person rather than the situation that may have stimulated that behavior. And so the social psychologists, they're interested in the situation, and in particular the social situation that stimulates the response. So I want you to pay attention to this, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions after uh, the video. Maybe even in the middle of it. Let's bring up the volume level. Do you anything? No. I don't see anything either. Switch over what the input is. Anybody, what'd you say? Um, do you need to switch over like what input is being used right now? Why don't you come on over and show me if you've got a button you've got in mind. It's coming off the computer, yeah. Let's see what oh, can Let's try. <laughs> Constructing social reality, this time on discovering psychology. Both of these to you, but I want you to see this one first. 
Zimbardo is famous for, and he's probably the best of the videos in the series on social science. Why would an ordinary law abiding man a potentially lethal to a stranger? How can a person's eyesight be improved by simply changing the situation in which it's measured? The power of the situation. This time, I'm discovering psychology. 